Grab your hiking boots because we're going to explore the world of Mount Komorebi. This world has a very strong Japanese influence and it's made up of three distinct neighbourhoods being Wakaba, Senbamachi and Yukimatsu. Of course, on top of this we have Mount Komorebi itself. Yes, there is a Mount Komorebi in the world of Mount Komorebi and we're going to pretend that this isn't confusing. We're going to start by looking at Wakaba, which has space for 5 lots and I'd say it's the most relaxed of the 3 districts. There are still a few key features here, being a large and open swimmable lake which despite being so close to civilization, really gives off wilderness vibes and feels just a tad dangerous to spend time frolicking in. It's a great spot for an adventurous sim to live close to. There's also a cute water garden in Wakaba with a bridge which is a rather romantic little area where you can hang out with other sims or even it's just a great photo spot. Finally, there's the town square, featuring your favourite or least favourite mascot Yamachan. Yes, a very polarising mascot indeed. As well as a lot of open space and even a small Kare Sansui garden. There's a few vending machines and a market stall here, but overall it'll feel quite empty most of the time. That being said, Every Sunday from around 10am to around 7pm, the festival of youth will take place here, and this is the perfect outing for child sims. Here they can meet and play with kids their age, take part in arts and crafts, take on the Void Critter Challenge, and even pick up a festival specific Kabuto hat. I know what you're thinking, and I completely agree. Whoa, that fashion is off the charts. Such a flex. Moving on from Wakaba now, and we're going to dive into the Senba Machi neighborhood. And by dive, I mean stroll peacefully. The main area in Semba Machi consists of 5 lots and feels like a medium density town with a canal running through it. You can fish at the top of the canal here and there's a strange water feature in the area too. I don't know if water feature is the right word but I'll go with it anyway. There's also a few vending machines and stalls around the town and this area is also the location for the Festival of Light, which occurs bi-weekly on Fridays from around 5pm to around 1am. Here, the neighbourhood will light up and you can buy a festival-specific kimono. Sims can also make wishes at Tanabata trees, which will give them happy moodlets, and there's a bonfire that shoots off fireworks as if it's not incredibly dangerous. Gorgeous lanterns will litter the canal during the festival too, which makes the Festival of Light a great time to snap up some beautiful pictures. Now it's a little hidden, but it's the spaces to the north and west of this main area that really bring the Senba Machi neighborhood to life. Firstly, let's head to the west where you'll find a rather secret spot with a medium climbing wall. This is great for training your rock climbing skill, and what's also cool is that if your sims don't kill themselves reaching the top, then it's a good area to find a few collectibles, and there are a couple of planters too. I also found that this is a great camping spot in the neighbourhood if that's your thing. Now from this spot, if you head north, you'll lead into a bamboo forest. Note this forest is still west of the main area in Senba Machi, and I believe it's inspired by the Arashiyama Bamboo Grove in Japan. It's an awesome path for your sims to stroll around in and even go hiking through. Exiting north of the forest, you'll notice an area with a few Japanese style graves which you can pay your respects at. Also note that during the Festival of Light, candles will illuminate the bamboo grove and the grave area and the mood lighting really makes these areas feel extra special. If you keep heading north from the grave, you'll come across a gorgeous temple. Now sadly you can't go inside, but you can interact with the wishing wall nearby. Making a wish or taking photos, the temple is also a beautiful structure to take some touristy photos with it in the background or to paint a picture of. Then, if you head east from the temple, you'll make your way across a beautiful red bridge, which is a great lookout point I must say. 10 out of 10 spot to watch the sunset if that's your sims thing. Once you're across, you'll notice an interesting open space with a cave, and you can shout into the cave to hear your echo back. Sadly, besides being able to hear an echo, I don't think this cave does much else. Then, if you continue to follow the path to the east and then a little bit south, then you'll arrive back at the main built-up town area. Before we move on, also know that around the place, 
In particular, at the entrances to the bamboo grove to the west of the town, you'll find notice boards, and these can be used by Sims to start hikes to the various areas in Senbamachi. Hiking can be a great group activity and a way for Sims to grow their relationship with each other, or even just a good way to encourage your Sims to be more zen. Finally, we're turning our attention to Yukimatsu, which is a mountainous, snowy neighbourhood. We'll start right in front of the chairlift, where you'll notice a kind of cute open little square. Here there are a few vending machines, but it's also where the Festival of Snow takes place. This happens bi-weekly on Saturdays from around 3pm to around 2am. And here you can pick up the festival specific snow outfit and take in the beautiful giant ice sculptures that make an appearance which look incredible. Definitely photo worthy. Now heading east of the little square, there are a few lots as well as a bit of snow. But if you head west, then you'll notice some beginner ski fields. Here your sims can start off their skiing or snowboarding adventures and even go sledding. It's perfect for sims who are a little bit less adventurous and who want to chill out a bit on the slopes. If you keep heading west, then you'll run into some low climbing walls, which should be your first stop for training the rock climbing skill. And further west, you'll find yourself in a foresty area with an icy stream and snow-covered bridges. This is a stunning location where your sims can go hiking. And there are a few key callouts. The first is a cave with a few monkey statues, which you can make offerings to for various moodlets. There's also an open snowy area, which is great for if you want some privacy with another sim, or even to play in the snow with a group. Finally, there's a little shrine, which is a great little location to visit. Now let's head back to the chairlift and ride it to the top. From here, you'll notice four slopes. Looking down the slopes, from right to left, you'll have the beginner, intermediate, expert, and ludicrous slopes for both skiing and snowboarding, which is where your sims can live their best adrenaline-filled life and train those two skills up as well. Now at the top of the mountain behind the slopes, you'll also notice a medium climbing wall, and this is your starting point when climbing Mount Komarebi. To climb this mountain, you'll need a high rock climbing skill, and then to use your phone to plan a social event in which you'll want to choose to start a mountain climb excursion. The marker behind the medium wall is your first stop when climbing Mount Komarebi. Note that I will have a full guide on rock climbing and climbing Mount Komarebi in the description. But along your way up the mountain, you'll head through snowy fields and climb a lot of walls. Most notably in stage 3 and again on stage 4 at the peak of the mountain, you'll notice a cave. These are sometimes explorable and can give a lot of random scenarios and moodlets, and they're also a spicy woohoo location. Spicy might be the wrong word here, but they're good if your sim is a little bit desperate for some fun on their way up the freezing mountain. The peak of Mount Komarebi is also absolutely gorgeous, with one of the best views in the game. There's also an editable lot at the top of the mountain where you can build whatever you like and spend some time at. So if you want to make it a camping ground or a small outdoor onsen, then you absolutely can. And we've reached the end. That's a guide to the world of Mount Komarebi in The Sims 4. If you enjoyed or found this helpful, then please subscribe and leave a like. I would really appreciate it and have an amazing day. See you later.